Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, Nathan here with another Overwatch uh, video and today we're going to talk about Baptiste. We're going to break him down a little bit and uh, in my road to sort of climb the Overwatch competitive ladder, um, I want to break down kind of every healer that I tend to play heavily and, and, and really dissect their strengths, weaknesses, and essentially turn all of that information into goals that you can use on the battlefield. Things you can actually uh, apply in game uh, to have a better outcome for yourself. Okay, so what is the first thing we want to do? Well, first, I think we should spend a little bit of time thinking about this hero before we actually even launch into a competitive game. So let's go just ability by ability and sort of break down everything about Baptiste. So first of all, Baptiste has about a medium movement speed. I would say he's uh, faster than the slowest uh, champion, which is Bastion, I think, at this point. January 19th, 2020, for whatever patch this happens to be. But So he is fairly slow moving horizontally, but the beauty of Baptiste and why he's actually... Uh, can get to the battlefield faster is because of his tremendous vertical movement, which is actually the most redeeming quality about him, in my opinion. Okay, so he's slow moving horizontally, uh, but very agile vertically. So off the top of my head, a couple of ways in which that can be useful is that, well, you could use this vertical movement to get to the battlefield faster. So you always want to look for shortcuts in the route that you take back to the battlefield because unfortunately dying is a part of every Overwatch game. And so um, being able to get back to the battlefield is a fairly important aspect in my opinion. So let's come up with a couple more. So because he can jump so freely, you'd probably want to use that to jump around a lot on the battlefield and really try to dodge shots as much as possible. Dodging is a very important aspect of Overwatch. And finally, I would say the other thing that you would want to be doing is to um, attain better firing positions. And so... With that, all of that in mind, um, we can kind of come up with a game plan, sort of a sort of a roadmap as to how we want to use Baptiste from a movement perspective. Okay, so we always want to be on the high ground. We want to get here quickly from spawn. We always want to be on, high on the high ground, and we also want to be jumping around, looking uh, for teammates to heal, for enemies to aim at. And by doing this, by always being on the high ground and then jumping around a lot, we can be hard to hit. Um, granted, I will say that that answer does, or that that conclusion does change a little bit the higher MMRs you get to, because the people who are very good at hit scan heroes, specifically champions like Widowmaker, Hans, uh, not Hanzo, um, uh, McCree is what I was trying to say, and Ash will be able to just headshot you out of the air because they can very easily predict where you are going to land because you are falling, and that is all predictable motion. So, um, you always kind of want to be jumping around, you know, once you might realize they have a really good Widowmaker. And at that point, you might want to take more cover behind your teammates, uh, utilize the shield more, etc. Okay, movement down. Um, let's talk about his primary and secondary fire. So obviously, Baptiste uses heal grenades to heal uh, teammates in an area of effect. And so you always want to be aiming, not, e not necessarily at a specific teammate uh, when you are attempting to just heal, but you kind of want to shoot for the middle of the crowd. And so kind of having that ability to just predict um, and and predict and be accurate enough to consistently hit this like target area uh, that covers multiple people is a very important part of playing Baptiste. So for example, um, this doesn't really show it because these teammates are somewhat stable, but let's imagine all of these enemies are allies for a moment and they need to be healed. So you gotta say like, okay, well there's kind of a moving spot between these guys, uh, somewhat of like an average distance or like a middle ground between them. And so you kind of do that little math uh, challenge in your head where you say, okay, what is the width of the grenade and will um, the healing radius hit your teammates? Um, if not, then you would want to aim for a teammate more. Um, that way you have a better chance of hitting them with an actual heal grenade. And if you think you can hit uh, both of them with the radius, then you aim for the middle. And so it's kind of like a quick if 
check in your brain when you uh, are doing that out on the battlefield. Okay, so healing. Next is his primary fire, which is, uh, I would say, the second most redeeming quality out of Baptiste because you can actually hit a lot of damage on these headshots. Granted, it's a lot easier to hit these bots, you know, when they're stable and they have a large uh, hitbox, but you can kind of gauge the power of his primary fire. I'm assuming these training bots have 200 health. Let's see. I just, okay. Yeah, so they probably have around 200 health. And so I think you can actually two burst any or uh, most of the squishier champions with hit, uh, two like full bursts of headshots off of Baptiste. And so that's always something you want to be aiming for because he has a hit scan weapon. You always want to be looking for particularly weak targets. Um, if there is an enemy Farah, sh sh that is one of your highest priorities as Baptiste. Um, of course, you have to make that tactical decision in the moment of whether healing your team or shooting the enemy, uh, which you should prioritize. But so be the fact that he's hit scan means that he can headshot. You should always aim for aim for headshots, um, just like you're playing a zombie game, uh, because eventually the Id the ideology behind that is that eventually, even though you might not start out good at hitting headshots, by training your eyes to look for a smaller target you actually do become better at that specific activity over time. Um, and it feels like that's why, you know, people will tell you that you're kind of using a crutch if you aim for body shots in a game like Team Fortress 2 or something, or Overwatch or, or something where sniping has a very high skill ceiling. But anyway, okay, so uh, we kind of know what enemies we're gunning for. We're shooting to um, headshot, particularly squishy targets, um, and then also apply damage, you know, wherever you can beyond that. I think that goes without saying. Uh, the last uh, two abilities that have remained to be covered are his self-heal and his invulnerability field. So the self-heal, I would mostly reserve this ability for two instances one is that you need healing yourself um you always want to don't ever feel regret or feel bad about um using that cooldown on yourself because the longer you're out there on the battlefield the more heals you're going to be able to provide with his alt fire uh, and then the second one would be if you're obviously in, you know, where all of your teammates are missing health would be an obvious choice to use it in that moment. Okay. And then the invulnerability field w actually was changed in this most recent patch. So it went from, I think, being deployed for seven seconds to five seconds. And um, that to me was a fair balance. Uh, you know, if you cut, convert that to a percentage, uh, what's yeah. two out of seven? So it was a nerf of about 28% effectiveness. Um, and I feel that that was appropriate because invulnerability in Overwatch is a super powerful ability. And the f even the fact that the enemy has to destroy it first gives it immense power because you can use this to counter um, instant death abilities like you know, the Junkrat Tire, uh, Diva Bomb, and I mean, even like a Rhine Shatter if he's charged or damage boosted in some way. And so usage of your invulnerability field, I would say separates the great uh, players of Baptiste from the, from the rest because you always want to use it to just extend your team's um, time on the battlefield. And you really have to use it to pr like being able to predict when those instant death alts are going to come is really kind of an art. It is basically just very powerful for those instant death abilities. Okay, so let's just head into the match and we will um, talk while we skirmish because skirmish is game. Hashtag skirmish is game. Um, and so, boom. So I'm trying to think, okay, so one of the other things to keep in mind as a healer is how much your team can sustain themselves. And so the reason why Roadhog is not a very high priority target uh, for healers in Overwatch is because he has an ability that gives him 300 health every, you know, dozen seconds or so. And so I don't, I don't actually know the real number, but... Um, 
And so basically you have to do that math in your head of like, oops, let's go back here. Okay. And there we see the power of the invulnerability field, <laughs> which is one of my favorite things about this here. So anyway, you do that math in your head of, you know, okay, take this Roadhog's health, add 300 to it because most Roadhogs are going to have an eye on their health and, and, use, and use that ability when they need to. Okay, sick. We got our bat pick, ladies and gentlemen. We got, we are good to go. Also, the Wasteland skin is the only way to go. I also have the Combat Medic, which looks pretty cool, but he looks more like a Space Marine than more of like a Desert Marauder, which is kind of what I'm going for in this skin. Okay, so let's take a look at our team and do a quick analysis. So we're probably gonna wanna stick next to the Orisa, and if the uh, Torbjorn is smart, he will also uh, stick next to the Orisa shield because that is just free damage absorption for his turret. And so I'm gonna pop a heal grenade, pop her, oh, did not save her. And so sometimes when you are kind of just in fights, you want to um, pop a heal grenade, take a normal shot, pop a heal grenade. There is an annoying over here. So we're gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna follow this hog over here because we need some coverage and we wanna provide. Uh, McCree on the right side. And I'm gonna stick in this field until I can heal him. And I'm back up to full health because Mora has been staying alive, which is excellent news. And just gonna hit with Torb. And so definitely just going to take the high <clears throat> ground when I have the opportunity. And I'm gonna make my way over to Junkrat. So this would be kind of a dumb move if you're in an MMR, a higher MMR, which, because theoretically you could get sniped out of the air pretty easily, but that was a tactical decision I was gonna make at this level. Um, this video is definitely aimed more towards um, kind of like the lower elos, I would say between like gold, silver, or even bronze, uh, so, because I don't play Overwatch enough and I don't understand it enough to provide advice for like a high level uh, player, you know, because players in like diamond, platinum um, can, you know, know the game well enough to understand the concepts that I usually talk about. Um, damn. Okay. We're doing good. We're doing good. So I do have Matrix here. So uh, I would definitely want to prioritize the Torbjorn or the Orisa to, to uh, shoot from here, which I think we're going to go ahead and set that up there. And for some reason, that McCree ulted uh, with not even turning the corner, which is actually kind of hilarious. So that was absolutely ineffective. And I think we can stagger their ball, which is fine with me. All right, we're sitting good. So just kind of, I'm really just trying to deal damage here to, to build alt. Uh, these are the points in time when you might be at an alt disadvantage if uh they're going left side left side oh sh ah. okay so roadhog ulted which is good that just keeps him off um i don't know that was more of like a decoy so one of the reasons that you might uh, use your invuln field, which actually is not useful, or like, it can be a dumb decision if you're not very smart about it, but you can sometimes pop invuln when you don't think that you're going to be insta-killed in the next, like, you know, 20 seconds, 
and that will just make it as a, a high priority decoy because people seem to shoot down in Volum field before they even uh shoot the enemy heroes a lot of time and i mean that would make sense because you always want to oh i can't be pushed into these gosh darn it there were some that hooked on the house up there that i call that bad luck although nothing is ever luck if you are truly being uh smart about it But you can use the Invuln field as a decoy uh, to sort of attract the attention of the enemy. And then if they shoot at it, you are aware of their position and you can uh, pass that information on to your teammates. Um, and, you know, if, if I was normally playing Overwatch without recording, I would definitely... Um, have voice comms on and, and make that the you know, priority to communicate all that information to your teammates. But uh, for this live com, we're just sitting tight. Which, gosh darn it. Look at that. That just looks, it looks so cool. And it's got the double trigger with the... Oh, I wish I could see the double trigger from, like... I think the next thing that Overwatch needs to add is uh, like they have in like CS:GO or like Call of Duty, where you can examine your weapon. I think that would be sick. They might, there might be like a ton of money to be made off of um, extra weapon skins in Overwatch, like because you do get entire skins now. But I think people would still pay money to like change up their weapon in uh, individually from the from the actual cha what the champion looks like. Okay, so we've got a Junkrat, a Reaper, more a Hog. So the priority for Matrix would probably be the Junkrat, and I think that Reaper's Blossom is... is uh, what you can do is drop Matrix, kind of like sideways facing in a group of enemies, and then if the Reaper will blossom from above into that, uh, and they're taken by surprise... Oh, uh, see, that was silly. That was absolutely silly. She actually probably saved the choke point with that with that mistake right there. I had seen the Pharah and I sh definitely should have predicted that she would use the uh, movement missile or whatever that's called, I don't know. Movement missile has the extra alliteration, so we'll just stick with that. That is a pretty cool Torbjorn skin. I guess right now I'm just kind of mindlessly shooting at Torbjorn, so I figured I would switch. Okay, so there's a Pharah again over there. Okay, so she did move, use the missiles so we can advance safely. Um, focus Ryan Shield, focus Ryan Shield. Oh shit, actually it should go on the right side, so I'm probably gonna involve as an extra safety precaution. Is there somebody? McCree behind, McCree behind. Okay, nice. Now, if Farah had alt, this would be a way scarier situation, but we've only been playing for like, what, a couple minutes, and I don't think that she built alt. So, well, that was a pretty simple game. We're gonna queue up for support one more time. We're gonna make this a two game uh, video. So, I think, a little post game analysis. Um, I think our Roadhog did excellent that round to be honest and uh even though honestly i'm i'm trying to they it seemed like oh shoot let's go to that it seemed like they didn't really group up that hard and we were able to really kind of get picks uh until their whole team force just kind of crumbled like that's what that match kind of seemed like and so I was, you know i mean plenty of healing on 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 my end and, and our other healer, I mean, Mora probably did plenty of healing as well because I had gold, but I would assume she was up there. And so I feel like we just kind of had a good team uh, and we were able to get a couple picks. And that's kind of the reason why we won that match. Um, so not really a ton of like takeaways from the perspective of playing Bat, but we'll see about this round. So <clears throat> Bastion is a good... DPS to sort of pair with Baptiste. Uh, Bastion is always a high priority target for the enemy team. And if you can pretty much consistently stay near your Bastion, um, providing that involved field is absolutely critical. But 
you know, you always want to attach a healer to Bastion. He's kind of like Farah in that way, where you always, you know, you always got to keep an eye on him and babysit him because he just attracts damage so much. And um, so also if you let's so in those scenarios where you would find yourself with a Bastion that was shooting at the enemy in his turret form. If you can add that little bit of extra damage, you can, you can, you know, if, for, oh, shit, these people. you can really just melt people is what I'm trying to say. If you kind of team up with that. So, okay. So I think I'm just going to stick to main here. Zarya might be on her own or I might just communicate to Mora that she should devote heals over there because see, it's just, he gets low so fast. Okay. That was a pretty unnecessary involved heal, but it provided a distraction for that soldier to shoot, so not the worst. Soldiers on the right? Is behind me. Field of mercy. There's a Hanzo. Okay, yeah, I got. That was definitely very clumsy on my part. I felt like I was in the open all the time, didn't have any cover, and really, I got you know killed by their DPS. So that's a pretty, pretty predictable death. IMO. Okay. All right, let's go up that choke. Uh, go left side, left side. Uh, let's let's go to the Zarya. She she's already there. Oh my gosh! I gotta get to the Zarya. Okay, can you go in the thing? Nice. We got the Bastion set up. Okay. Ah shoot. Okay, keep healing, keep healing. Don't want anybody to die. Hanzo in the doorway. Hanzo in the door. Am I gonna get stung by this Hanzo? Maybe. Darn it! Too much damage. Oh man, rough. headshot and she staggered me those are the moments that are hard to swallow when you get staggered <laughs> it's just the worst because not only do you have to wait to respawn you gotta wait to group up and it's just one of the inconveniences of this game okay but I can pair matrix with Bastion so if we come across some clean shooting that would definitely be worth it okay we gotta get we gotta use the window with that bastion has to push the cart. And we're gonna run away, run away, run away, and hopefully I don't get sniped out of the sky. Okay, thank you more. Add some damage to the team. Make sure that we push through this choke pretty cleanly, but I'm gonna keep an eye on my bastion and also touch the cart here. All right, we're doing okay. Doing good. Nice. Okay. Soldier behind. Soldier behind. Oh, and they have a ball. Where is the... I think he's... Okay. Nice. Oh, can I sit on top of you? No. Yeah. So you just kind of jump up and down. Uh, maybe you can headshot him? No. Ooh. Got some damage in there. Built out a little bit. Didn't really do much, but that's all right. Unfortunately, our Torbjorn is um, getting picked here, which is unfortunate. But. Okay. So I'm getting ready to pop Invuln here on Bastion because I sort of anticipate, like, game sense that something like an ult is coming. 
And so I'm just going to keep feeding him heals, keep hiding from the Sigma. Unfortunately, okay. So see, something like that is exactly why Game Sense exists. Okay, sweet. Now we're going to heal our team. Uh, pop self. Got to give it to Torbjorn. I'm waiting for Bastion to come back so I can Matrix. Bastion, come here for Matrix. Nice. Move up, move up. Bastion, get on cart. Okay, so we got only one on cart. All right. So I think we got free space. We're moving along just fine. And I'm gonna get up and headshot this Bastion. We staggered their Bastion, good job. Compliment the team. And trying to stay in here, okay. So this is group heal time. This is one of the best moments as Bat where you just, oh, that kind of sucks. But you just kind of, you know, play in the middle ground and sometimes you get picked. Sometimes that happens too. <laughs> it is part, <laughs> I couldn't move backward fast enough. Gosh, wouldn't that be a silly game mechanic if you could walk uh, backwards faster than you could run? That'd be awesome though. Retreating would be so much fun. So I don't know how much uh, I need to heal Bastion in this scenario because I feel like even though he has 300 health, he's still very squishy. And so I don't know. I don't know if I want to like treat him more as a tank right now or somebody that can get picked. Okay, well, that's fine. Maybe I, I, oh gosh. So I gotta focus more on uh, Torbjorn actually because he doesn't have any way to recuperate health. So he's a little bit higher priority. Um, and Ryan just bit it hard and I basically killed myself. Okay, that was not the best. That was not the best. We definitely should have grouped up at the end more and really pushed the cart as a unit. Um, it was hard to, it seemed like we were doing well. Like we were combining damage with um, kind of keeping the enemy on their back foot, you know, keeping them backing up with Ryan. Ryan was really getting in there. Uh, I am kind of one tricking uh, BAP though, just for the sake of this video. And so I'm trying to assess whether like I would switch in this moment. And I think the answer is probably no. I mean, I feel like I've been doing a decent job um, if getting picked here and there. So uh, maybe if anything uh, right now, if I were not recording, I'd probably think about switching to Mora um, de to decrease my, you know, rate of dying a little bit. She's also good at group heals. Um, so if you want to keep that sort of group heal, a part of your team comp, then uh, more is a good option along with Baptiste. Uh, probably wouldn't do Zenyatta because it's just so easy to get picked. Um, Mercy is already being played, and then uh, Brigitte, maybe. Brigitte? Brigitte? I think that's the correct pronunciation. Uh, I think Ryan wants to hold down here. So who's our frontline DPS or probably Junkrat. So we should probably line up wherever, wherever Junkrat lines up TBH. Okay. So he's going to shield for the Torb turret. Is that the, what I'm getting at? No, no. I just imagine Torb. They have a Bastion. So nobody's getting injured, so I'm just trying to focus focus heals really on uh, team. He's got a Mercy, so she's fine. Just going to heal Ryan. We definitely have to contest, though. And really, okay. Still contesting. Still contesting. I don't have a team behind me, but... Uh, play the objective, man. That's what they teach you in business school. <laughs> Play the objective. 6k heals. We uh we need to group up at choke. Oh my gosh. This is this is where you don't want to be. So we're all scattered right now. 
We're just gonna I'm just gonna back up a little bit. I think I can hit these heels from across the way. And avoid all that nonsense. Ryan, you're alone. Uh, shoot, you're alone. Sometimes it's useful to let people know that they're alone too, so that they uh, they uh, know to back the ah. up. Focus mercy if you can. And so here, I'm gonna hope for some boosted heals. I guess. Oh shoot! One of the two. One of the two. Oh, nailed by Hanzo from behind. They have four minutes to push, though, so it's unlikely that... I mean, it's unlikely that we're going to win the match, but maybe we can uh, pull something out here. We've been doing a pretty good job. Um, the key is to not get scattered, which I think we kind of currently are. Uh, we need to group for uh, final push. Uh, jump right back up a little bit. Okay, tanks go first, tanks go first. Bastion, Bastion, Bastion. Okay, nice. Don't get picked, don't get picked. Healing where I can. Nice, okay. Ooh, nice. That was a really fast heal, so we can just kind of focus on shooting them for a little bit. If I could hit a shot, though, my gosh. They have a Farah now. Farah's uh, up top, top platform. Holy crap. Okay, hopefully our Junkrat can contest that area. If not, I kind of have to. Oh, I still have 80 health. What am I doing? Heal, please. I need to hit this. Nice. Okay. Got their Farah off of a little cheap trick there. And maybe we can get their Sigma too. No, he's probably going to delay. The, the issue is that if there's somebody behind him. Yes. There is a teammate behind him. But they might be luring us away from the cart. Uh, Roadhog, you're alone? You're alone? I think I'm going to heal him from afar. Because we really need to focus on payload here. Uh, I'll protect myself. We're gonna matrix. Oh, I got ball before I died. <laughs> That's all right. We do need to contest payload though, if they do get on payload. None of them are on payload. So we kind of got a free, and I'm actually gonna panic go to Lucio for the sake of the match here because uh, that's way better for the win. So we got a little bit of a, uh... whoop, damn it. Shoot! Gonna contest! <laughs> yeah, that's GG. But anyway, still a decent uh, last round there. Still had 10k heals, you know? I don't know if that would kill me. Nope. And we're gonna keep contesting for 1 minute and 40 seconds. Could not get that mercy away from the resident unfortunately, and just kind of staggering in at this point. It's already GG, but um, you kind of got to make that last-ditch effort. All right. So anyway, a uh, little talk on Baptiste. So, you know, really good at those AoE heals. Uh, one of my favorite heroes because he is so versatile. He can do so many things. Um, and I think, is this our Rhine? He already left. Let's see. Ooh, and then he gets alt off of that. Yep, nice. And you get the AoE hammer. Perfect. Good play. All right. So that is a little breakdown of Baptiste. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and all that fun stuff on YouTube. So um, I'll see you guys in the next video.